Jazz Kang is from Go95 here, and I am with the great John Doe, fresh off her new EP, Empathy. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Spectacular. Thank you. Uh, the EP is fantastic. It's your first of two EPs that you're dropping this year, and at the end of last year, you dropped the Crash EP. So what is it about the EP format that appeals to you? Um, I just feel like it's a little bit less pressure. Um, it's less pressure that goes into making an album. So um, I guess I came into Empathy with a fresh mind. Crash was kind of technically my debut, so... There was a lot of pressure behind it. I didn't want to have that same mindset going into making empathy. So um, it was just a lot easier, more refreshing, and um, everything just came to me naturally. So I like that without making an EP that it's like that. Sweet. Yeah, you mentioned in your Forbes interview last year that you find that you've never been the type of person to only focus on one thing and you like working on multiple things. So it's interesting hearing that you went into this with a different mindset. And so I'm wondering, um, when you're doing these EPs, I mean, you have another one slated for this year too. So you don't work on them concurrently or do you ever work on multiple projects at the same time? Oh, I I feel like I'm always working on multiple projects. Like there are songs that I feel like will make my debut album I made like two years ago. Um, so I feel like I make a lot of different types of music and then now the, the challenge is like picking which songs need to come out now, which songs need to come out later, um, which songs like feel good together and can coexist together. Um, and that's kind of how empathy came about. I made maybe 50 songs. A lot of songs just didn't fit into the mold of what we were trying to do with empathy. So, um, you know, that's basically how we put empathy together and how I put anything that I work on. I'm just working on music. And once we make enough music, we can dig a project out of it, basically. Nice. You must have pretty deep vaults then that, you know, you can always, like, tap back into later. A little bit. A little bit. I don't want to seem like I just have all of this music sitting in a vault, but I have a little bit. I have enough um, that getting the next EP started, of course. So not quite Prince level, but getting there. So. <laughs> yeah. One day, when I have Prince's Empire, definitely I will. Have yeah. a million songs in the vault. Yeah, get a studio in Chanhassen. It'll be fantastic. So, <laughs> uh, when you mentioned I'm um, getting in the different mindset for empathy, and you can definitely hear a distinct change like in the production of it and how it's come about. So I'm curious, in your songwriting process, do you think of these EPs in terms of having the vision for them before you start making the songs? Or is it when you start making the songs, you realize how it's coming together? I think I have an end goal. Um, and for this first EP, I knew that Crash was very versatile. I wanted my debut to be like that. Um... But I feel like when I was coming into the second EP, I'm like, okay, now I more so want to give people what they're what they're looking for from me. Like I would like to kind of, I feel like I want to get that out of the way. Um, people do sometimes try to put me in this box as like a vibe artist or R and B artist. So I didn't want my debut to come like come about like one type of sound. Once I established that I could pretty much go anywhere, I was like, okay, now I can do what people are sometimes expecting from me and really do enjoy from me. Um, and that's the mindset that I want to make me empathy. Once we started making the actual music, we kind of knew how it would sound. I don't think we had like a distinct, specific sound. Um, but once we started making the music, it kind of started revealing itself almost. That's smart. It just blossoms like that. Yeah, it definitely blossomed into something. So the first time we heard you was on 2017's Wikipedia. We actually had that in circulation here at the station. Mm -hmm. Okay, shout out to y'all. That's a good song. Yeah, I I like it a lot too. And so with all that's changed, not just with you and in your life, but in how the Chicago scene as a whole has really changed in the past two Mm -hmm. years, uh, how different is it now making music as a Chicago artist between now and when you made Wikipedia? And do you find the perception of you has changed at all either? Um, I don't. I think my per- the perception of me in Chicago has always been like people have always perceived me as more than I feel like I am. So I don't think that has really changed, especially 
now with my growth as an artist, people are still looking at me like, you know, one of the, I guess for lack of better words, hometown heroes. And that's not to like put me on a pedestal or anything, but a lot of people are as proud of the Chicago Renaissance as having in music. From the time that I made Wikipedia and the time till now, I feel like the culture has been cultivated a little bit more. Um, so things are equally accessible, but the people, you know, our community is constantly shifting. Like once you are in this place and you work with this person and you work on this project, then those people kind of move away or they relocate. Um, so I think that's interesting to look at. A lot of the people in our, the pillars in our community, um, are transitioning. They're going to new, new chapters and new levels. So it's inspiring for me what is different in the creative process. Like some people aren't as local as they used to be. And it's not like I can just show up at your house and work all night and go home. Um, but it's it's caused me to be a little bit more independent in the process and resourceful as far as reaching out to different people around the city. So I, I would guess I would say that everything's for the best. Nice. And speaking of reaching out with different people and outside of uh, Chicago, even uh, a friend of the station, uh, Kilani, who we brought in for a show last year, is on the new Empathy EP. Uh, how did you originally link up with her? Kilani and I have been friends um, since 2013. First met, she was still blossoming into her career as a solo artist. We started off getting in the studio. As soon as we met, right away, just for fun, as a hobby. Just kind of what I was just saying, like, when you meet people right before they go into new chapters, um, that was kind of our meeting place. She was not at the place she is now, which is amazing. So it kind of felt like it was inevitable for us to end up having a collaboration together. And when I asked her, she was just like, of course, I've been waiting, and it's about time, so... Um, everything just came came pretty naturally once I reached out to her and asked her to get on the record. And I was really excited that she um, agreed to do it. Wonderful. Well, uh, thanks again so much for taking the time to speak to us. This has been wonderful. And congrats again on Empathy. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And I can't wait to, you know, maybe come to the radio station in person one day.